Hello, and welcome back to the final episode of the Custom NPCs tutorial series. In this episode, I'm just going to give some random facts, tidbits, and tips that you might find helpful for custom NPCs. I might make a sequel to this video if I can think of any other useful information, but for now, this is the final episode of the tutorial series. So let's get right into it. If you want multiple commands to run at the end of a quest or when a dialogue is read, you can have a chain of command blocks with all the commands you want, then in the dialogue or quest, you set block redstone block or torch to activate that command block chain. Or you can put all the commands you want into a scene and then use the nope scene start command at the end of the dialogue request. The NPC's home is actually affected by night. You can load day, use the command slash nope's NPC home, then load night. and do it again, and the NPC's home will change depending on if it's day or night. You can use this to make them go someplace during the day, and then back to their home at night. You can reset a scene within itself so that it can be started again without you having to do it manually. Set the game rule, send command feedback to false to hide the scene started message. If you want to TP an NPC somewhere while building, you can set their home with the command and then edit them. If you want to get rid of them without scripting or using a command, you can use a scene to teleport them. I don't like the default font for custom NPCs. If you set it to the Minecraft font using slash nopes config Minecraft, it will use whatever font Minecraft is using. This also allows you to do Minecraft formatting with the ampersand symbol. So for example here, I type and k, blah 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 blah, and when I look at the dialog, I get this effect. If you want a role screen to only be available after a certain condition, you can create two dialogs, one that's available before that condition, and another one after. The dialog that's available after the condition can have an option that leads to the role. Using a command block and a scoreboard check, you can have a quest start automatically when the player enters an area. This is for 1.12, so here I would have in this command block, nope's quest start at p, in square brackets, r equal 20, so that's a radius of 20 blocks, comma, score underscore quest started equal 1, and then the quest id. And then in another chain command block, we set the quest started score for the player to be 2. The reason you need a scoreboard check is because the command ignores availability or repeatable conditions. Even if you've done the quest, it will give the quest again, so you have to have a scoreboard check so it doesn't start it twice.
If you want a dialog to only show up once, set it to be available before itself. All of your player data and custom NPC things are stored externally in the world folder in the custom NPCs folder. All your dialogues, quests, etc, etc. The actual NPCs themselves are not stored in a folder, they are saved like any other entity in Minecraft. You won't find a folder with every zombie, just like how you won't find a folder with all the NPCs. And that was my list of random facts and tidbits that you might have found helpful. Thank you for watching. Now that we are at the end, I would like to do a bit of a shameless self-plug and ask that you all check out my Minecraft map, Daruma. All of my knowledge about custom NPCs was gained by working on this map for 6 years, so I would greatly appreciate you going out and trying it.